Today, we're gonna carve a cute little hedgehog sign. Hey guys, hit that subscribe button and click that little bell icon. We're putting out tons of content. We got some great projects coming up. So do us a solid, hit that button. So today to make this sign, we're using our hedgehog stencil of the month for November of 2023 and our one inch Clarendon letters. So the material we're using today for the sign is a one by 12 common board from Home Depot or Lowe's. It's basically an inexpensive pine. Everything we use today will have links in the description below so you can go right to the website and check them out. So sometimes when you're laying out big letters or stencils, they warp a little bit. So dad is using this little adhesive tape strip that he found on Amazon and man, this thing works great. You just put little pieces on all the different edges and it sticks it down really well and it's way cleaner than using the spray adhesive. I'll leave a link for this stuff in the description below along with everything else we're using. So the nice thing about stencils is they lay out really fast. Dad just centered this thing on the board and he just eyeballed it and then he sprayed it with our primer. Now another benefit of using that adhesive tape is that it doesn't break the, tent, the stencils when you take it off. And if there's a little left over, just a little pencil eraser will get that stuff right off. Now the box that's at the bottom of this stencil, there's plenty of room for whatever you really want to say as long as it's not too big or you have to use smaller letters. But the welcome with our one inch Clarendon fit perfect. Once the letters were laid out, we used cardboard and tape to make sure we didn't get any overspray where we didn't want to. And it worked out really well. The majority of this sign we did with a profile bit. Now dad started off at an eighth of an inch deep. And that's because, first of all, this board is a little bit grainy. The shallower you go, the easier it is to hold a line. So he wanted to make sure he got all of his initial carving straight. Also, there's quite a few small lines in here and even areas where like the little hedgehog fur or whatever it is, hits the umbrella, has some sharp points. So when you're shallower, it's a little bit easier to get the detail in that. We're carving this outset, so that means everything that's black is gonna be carved away. So doing things, especially on the inside like this, where the hedgehog fur meet the umbrella, um, around the nose, things like that, don't try to get it perfect on your first pass. You have some room for error. So start out a little bit farther away from the line and you can always come back and feather it in. Especially where the flower meets the hedgehog right there, that's a really, really thin line. You could use the carving liner bit to just do that, but we like to kind of be a little more efficient than that. So dad used the profile bit, he just lifted it up and gave it a bit of a shallower cut. Something I think we could have done different is instead of carving the raindrops inset like this, like carving all the black away, I think single line outset would have looked a little bit better where we just carved a nice straight line around the raindrops. That way they have the black line around it, but the drop itself and the umbrella are wood colored. I don't know, I think it would have looked a little bit nicer. Now, when you're doing long straight lines, that's really difficult. So notice dad turned the board so when he's doing these long straight lines, he's actually pulling the router towards him. Remember, most of the time, you can maneuver the board to make your carving a little bit easier. And this definitely helps with getting the lines straight. Once the initial profile was done, now dad drops the 
profile bit down to a quarter of an inch to give that buffer zone because when we go back in with the 90 those sharp corners it's really difficult to get those without nicking your carving so it's really important to give yourself enough room to go in there and do your background and when you drop this down to a quarter of an inch deep that makes a much fatter line and you can also use it to take out small areas instead of trying to get the 90 degree bit into those really really tight spots Now dad's using the 60 degree to do the one inch lettering. Now you'll notice that on the W, he actually brings the router towards him, but he had to clean up the lines and go away. Sometimes the grain of the board will dictate how you carve. So after the W, like on this L for example, to do his vertical lines, he actually pushed the router away and that allowed him to get a little bit of a straighter cut based on how the grain is in the board. The one thing about woodworking, you guys, which I'm sure you know, is that every board is different. Even if you cut different pieces off the same board, you're not always gonna have the same grain. Now we just gotta go in and remove all of the interior pieces with the 90 degree bit. And the 90 degree bit is 90 degrees so it gives a much wider cut which is why the buffer zone is so important once all of that is cut out then dad's going to go back around with the 90 degree bit and he's going to give a big fat line around the entire stencil now you don't have to do this but i think it really helps to uh, add to the contrast of the carving against the board it just makes it look a little bit nicer Now this is a step that a lot of people skip and once you spray and sand, you're really going to regret it. You have to brush out your carving to get all of the sawdust out of there and any loose chips. So once that was done, dad used our 45 degree chamfer bit and he just put a nice deep chamfer to give it a clean look. Then he sprayed it with our primer. Again, you don't want to overspray, you just want to make sure to get it a nice even black on all your carving. Once the primer dried, which took about five minutes, then dad used an 80 grit disc to get most of the black off, 80 or 90%, and then he went back with 120 grit on a random orbital to give it a flat finish. Then he put a coat of our Rust-Oleum Clear to give it a nice finish. There it is, guys. Really love the way this thing came out. This is kind of a grainy board, but it's still carved really well. It's an easy carve, and I love the way this thing came out. So there's links in the description below for all of this stuff, everything that we use. If you guys have any questions, please email me, eric at makeawoodsign.com. Thanks again so much for watching, guys. We love you. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.